Hello, my name's Angela Dispensieri. I'm a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, AL amyloidosis. Uh, things that we can talk about is uh, how do we make the diagnosis? This is probably one of the most important things because delayed diagnosis in AL amyloid uh, can amount to um, death, uh, essentially, and we need to diagnose patients before they have advanced cardiac disease. So there are a number of different initiatives in terms of educate, educating physicians and multi-specialty physicians to get an earlier diagnosis. Those MGUS patients uh, that have funny symptoms, the smoldering patients who have um, complex symptoms like shortness of breath or edema, uh, all should be considered as possible AL patients. Um, also, cardiologists need to really remember that diastolic dysfunction uh, can be a harbinger of AL amyloidosis. The next important thing about um, thinking about the diagnosis and making the diagnosis is making the correct diagnosis. So uh, once one considers a diagnosis of AL amyloid, they get the free light chains, they do a biopsy. It's imperative that that biopsy be typed for amyloid. Um, there are many different types of amyloidosis, and only AL amyloid or light chain amyloid will respond to chemotherapy. Um, ATTR amyloid or transthyretin amyloid is another uh, form of amyloidosis that has very distinct therapies. Uh, it's more common in older men, and uh, it definitely uh, should be not confused with AL amyloidosis. So once you have a diagnosis, then it's very important that a patient be staged. So we already have our free light chains. We have our um, monoclonal proteins, 24-hour urine, hopefully. Uh, but then one needs to get cardiac biomarkers like nt p and troponins. Um, that really helps us stratify uh, how a patient's going to do, important for prognostication.